All right, so um, welcome to the second section on um, discussion of a quiz question. And um, in this section, we are going to talk about the essay part. So um, the section B, question one, says that two different analysts have predicted the average earnings per share for two different countries, sorry, two different industries. Analyst A covers the telecom industry and Analyst B covers the automotive parts and supplies. Since they were unable to obtain data for all the firms in the respective industries, they employ samples. So then following table relates to their predictions. So essentially, um, in this table, we have their sample size or the number of firms employed. So Analyst A employed 10 firms, Analyst B employed 15 firms. Then there's the average forecast from the sample. This is the average forecast error from the sample. And it is the standard deviation of the forecast error. A, you see, before we get into, even though this question is talking about two different analysts, we just don't jump and conclude that we are talking about independent samples or hypothesis testing for two population parameters. Reason being that we need to look at the requirement of the question first. So let's look at A. Some other analysts in the industry claim that all forecasts made by analyst A usually have large forecast error. So listen carefully. The question is that somebody is claiming something about the forecast error, not the forecast itself. So essentially, it makes this column, the average forecast itself, not useful because the question is a claim about a forecast error. Okay, so this column essentially is not useful because everything is about the forecast error and then the standard deviation of the forecast error, okay? So somebody is making a claim that some, um, or the analyst, the other analysts are making a claim that analysts usually have a large forecast error. And then in the industry, forecast errors greater than 0 0.04 are deemed as high, okay? So here, if somebody is making a claim that the forecast error is high and then being high means that it's greater than 4, 0 0.04. What it means is that the claim is that the average forecast error is actually greater than 0 0.04. So the alternative hypothesis will be mu is greater than 0 0.04. And then the opposite of the alternative hypothesis, which is the null hypothesis, will be mu is less than or equal to 0 0.04. B, what decision can you make on the null hypothesis in A above at 5% significant level? If applicable, use T critical of 1.8331. Now let me show you something. Anytime you see a T critical value with like maybe T subscript 0 0.05, it is one tail. If it is two tail, critical T for two tail, you will see T 0 0.05 slash two, like the second one. Okay, so whether it is 5% significance or whatever, what I want you to know is that T subscript alpha without slash two means that it is T critical for one tail. But T subscript alpha slash two means that it is T critical for two tails. Now, obviously, this question here is one tail because the null hypothesis is not the strict equal to sign. So it's a one tail. So even if you are testing the hypothesis, you are going to use this T critical, this one which we, don't, we do not need to read from a table because the question has given the answer, right? Now, this is how we punch the T critical for one tail. So here, the question gave standard deviation for the sample, all right? The question did not say anything about the standard deviation for the population. So these standard deviation figures here are for the sample. So remember, if population standard deviation is unknown, we use the sample standard deviation as a replacement, in which case the critical value will become T instead of Z. So to compute a critical T, we use the formula sample mean. So there's a formula here, sample mean minus population mean over sample standard deviation, that's the square root of sample size. So for analyst A, there's a sample standard deviation here. There's a sample mean of the forecast error. And then the population mean is always the one found in the hypothesis. So if you do your calculations, you fit them. Remember the sample size for analysis A is 10. You employ 10 firms. 
So if you do your calculations, well, you get the computed T value to be 3.1623. Then again here, because the null hypothesis was less than or equal to, if you are drawing the, the distribution, okay, we allow for a little greater than. Okay, so if you draw the distribution, we allow for a little greater than, right? If you draw the distribution, we allow for a little greater than. Now, it means that anything greater than the critical bound of 1.8331, we are going to reject the hypothesis. So here is the case where we have the computed T to be 3.1623, which is obviously greater than the critical T of 1.8331. So here, the null hypothesis is rejected. So here, we said that since the computed T is this, and it's greater than critical T, the null hypothesis is rejected because the question was about what decision can you make on the null hypothesis at 5% significance level? And remember, the question has already given you the critical T for the 5% significance level. C, reviewing the earnings per share forecasting performance data for analyst A and B, you want to investigate whether Analyst A has large forecast error relative to Analyst B. Okay, you want to investigate whether Analyst A, he has large forecasting error relative to Analyst B. So what are we doing? Here we are looking at two separate people or two independent people. So here we are talking about hypothesis testing for mean when it involves two population parameters and obviously, you're looking at two population mean for independent samples. Now, you want to investigate whether analyst A has larger forecast error relative to B. So it means that the mean of analyst A is larger than or is greater than the mean of analyst B. And because it has the greater than sign, remember I told you three signs which will be in the alternative, the greater than sign, the less than sign or the not equal to sign. That would be the alternative hypothesis. So here, our alternative is this. And then if you want to write the now, it is the opposite. The now will be mu of analyst A or one is less than or equal to the mu of analyst two or B, right? Okay. And of course, mathematically, if it crosses to the other side, if this cross to the other side becomes mu of A minus mu of B, will be less than or equal to zero. Then the alternative will be mu of A minus mu of B is greater than zero. So essentially, if you write this as a hypothesis or that as a hypothesis, it means the same thing, okay? Here we wrote one and two because of course, always the first mention is the mu one and then the second mention which is analyst B will be mu two. So it's essentially the same thing. Now, again, the question, does not provide um, figures for population standard deviation. So what we are doing, the hypothesis testing we are doing right now is hypothesis testing for two population mean independent samples. When population standard deviations are unknown. But remember, when it's unknown, the default assumption is that they are equal, right? So here, identify and compute the test statistic for conduct for, for, for conducting the test of the null hypothesis in CI. So here, this is the formula for computing the C value for two independent samples when population standard deviation are unknown. Now in this formula is something that um, you are familiar with. In this formula, again, the SP is also expanded as that, right? So if you look at the question, this is a sample mean for group one or analyst A, sample mean for group two. Because listen, the question is about forecast error, not the forecast itself. So I've told you that this column here essentially is irrelevant, right? So the question is about the forecast error, not the forecast itself. So this is a sample mean one, sample mean two, sample standard deviation one, sample standard deviation two, sample size one, sample size two. So having gotten all these figures, then 
we fit them into um, this formula. Now, essentially, the part that says population mean one minus population mean two is the figure in the hypothesis, which is what, zero. So when you fit everything here, first of all, we compute our SP with the figures. Now, remember, sample size one was 10. Um, sample standard deviation one was 0 0.01. Sample size two was 15 to minus one per the formula. Um, sample standard deviation two was 0 0.0. 0.09 and then N1, that's 10 plus N2 minus 2. So essentially, the SP or the pool standard deviation was this. So we bring this into the formula again here. We fit all the other figures and then we have the computed T to be 7.8175. Now, that was the computed T. Then the question says that determine whether to reject the null hypothesis at 5% significance. If applicable, use T one tail of 1.7139 or T two tail 2.0687. So obviously looking at the null hypothesis, it means that we are talking about a one tail test. All right, and the null says less than or equal to. So it means that when we are drawing, we allow for a little, greater than, and that will be our critical bound, which will be T is equal to 1.7139 as provided in the question, all right? So it means that anything greater than T is equal to 1.7139, the null hypothesis will be rejected. So since our T here, 7.8175, is far greater than the critical bound of 1.7139, the null hypothesis is rejected. Question two, you are investigating what are the returns on an investment for a final, sorry, a financial market disruption is better than after the disruption. You will gather the following data for 120 months of return before the disruption and 120 months after the disruption. You specified a 0 0.05 level of significance. The sample pair difference between the return before and after the disruption is 12.17. So here, the question says the sample paired difference. Now paired, in, paired, um, paired samples t-test is used to test the difference in mean of the same matching samples before and after an event. So even if you don't know, the once the question is a sample paired difference, you must know we are talking about sample, and we are talking about um, the paired sample T test. So the question said that the paired sample difference, the sample pairs, uh, the sample paired difference between the return before and return after is um, 12.17. So that's the D with a bar is 12.17. Okay. Then the, stand, the standard deviation of the sample paired difference is. 18.02, so S subscript D is 18.02. Formulate and test hypothesis consistent with the research goal. If applicable, use critical T of one, one, one tail is 1 1.6578 and then two tail is 1.9801. Now, remember, this question is a pair sample T test, right? And the question is, that you want to see whether the investment before is greater than the investment out after. And I've told you this, the law of first mention. Once the question says that before is greater than after, it means that if you find the matching difference or the pair difference between the two, the answer must be positive. Why must the answer be positive? Let's say I am before, you are after. If we find a difference between the two of us and I'm better than you, right? Then the difference between the two of us should be a positive figure. If the two of us are the same, the difference should be zero. If you are bigger than me, the difference should be negative. But once I am bigger than you or I am better than you, and we are finding a pair difference between the two of us, me minus you, the pair difference between the various list of figures we have, the pair difference between the two of us should be a positive figure, right? So here, the, pair, the population pair difference, that's mu D, 
is greater than zero because it's a positive figure. Now, the greater than means that it will be in the alternative, right? So the opposite is now, which is mu d is less than or equal to zero. Now, we are going to compute our t. Now, the t statistic for paired samples is sample pair difference minus the population pair difference over the standard deviation of the pair difference, the sample standard deviation of the pair difference, divided by square root of sample size. So obviously, the question gave the sample pair difference to be 12.17. The population pair difference, the one in the hypothesis, which is zero. Then this figure, we are familiar with it, the 18.02, because I spoke about it earlier. And then the sample size is 120 max, right? Per the person. So you fit it there. When you compute in two decimal places, our t is equal to 7.40. Now, the null was less than or equal to, right? So we allow for a little greater than. And it's one to where the question provides the critical bound to be 1.6578. So the critical T is 1.6578. So anything above here is the rejection region. Now, our computer T is 7.40, which is far bigger than the critical T of 1.6578. So the null hypothesis is obviously rejected. The final question. The final question will be treated in the next video. So the final question is about regression. So I'm going to give you feedback on the final question in the next video. Please comment, like, share, subscribe, and um, give us feedback. Thank you.